largest district in India. And I'm also driving through one of the most colorful regions. From brown landscapes and their beautiful palaces to white landscapes and their exquisite handicrafts. This week, I'm crossing latitudinal boundaries to enter the Wild West. Join me on my epic journey through Kutch on Follow the Star. The district of Kutch lies in the northwest of Gujarat, surrounded by the Gulf of Kutch to the south and the Arabian Sea to the west. A large part of the district is a seasonal island known as the Run of Kutch that makes for a fascinating geographical phenomenon. My journey starts in the seaside town of Mandvi. From there, it's north all the way. I visit the district headquarters of Bhuj and venture into the desert to experience Kachi culture before concluding my journey right at the tip of Gujarat in the great run of Kutch. My entire road trip is spread over a distance of 234 kilometers and I've chosen to drive the Mercedes B180. Gujarat is an ideal destination for road journeys. It has a rapidly expanding road network and the only hiccup I can see is traffic of the four-legged kind. The state is largely industrial and it's almost essential for the roads to be well connected and maintained. In fact, Gujarat has more state highways than other parts of the country and today, I'm taking State Highway 45 that leads up to the great run of Kutch. The only downside to Gujarat's otherwise impressive highways is the sheer lack of amenities for travellers who wish to take on the road. I've driven over 50 kilometres and I haven't seen even one restaurant or dhaba on the way. I've just entered Bhuj. It's the district headquarters of Kutch. The city serves as a base for tourists who want to explore the interiors of Kutch. Bhuj is known throughout the country as one of the worst affected areas of a devastating earthquake that struck Gujarat in 2001. The entire city has been reconstructed since, but there are still parts of Bhuj that stand as reminders of the city's historic past. I'm headed to one such place. Bhuj was ruled by the Jadeja dynasty for 438 years and Aina Mahal here is a remnant of the rule. This city has a lot of interesting stories to tell, so I'm here to meet an interesting storyteller. Promote JD's passion for history led to becoming a curator at Aina Mahal 28 years ago. He shares a special rapport with the royal family of Kutch and has even authored eight books that chronicle the heritage of the city. So Pramodji, I've heard that the architect of this place, he was a sailor. Yeah. Why don't you tell me a little about him and the history of this place? Actually, the Ram Singh Malam जो थे, वो Ram Singh Malam ने ये आइना महल को interior decoration किया है। Okay. Actually, he was a seaman, और उसका ship जा रहा था दरिया के अंदर, तो उसका ship break हो गया। वो time ship break हो गया। हाँ, तो उसको बचाने के लिए एक Dutch ship वहाँ से निकला, और उसने उसको बचाया। Save किया। और उसके अपने साथ Holland लेके गया। वो Holland के अंदर 18 साल रहा वो, 18 years। तो उसने बहुत सी art 
उसको सीखा उसने फिर वो रिटर्न हुआ जब भी वहाँ से हॉलैंड से वापस आया ये टाइम कच्छ के अंदर जो था राजा वो बहुत आर्ट का शौकीन था उसका नाम था महाराव लखबिर जी तो उसने उसके साथ संपर्क किया और वो राजा ने इसके अंदर टैलेंट देखा और उसने अपॉइंट कर दिया कच्छ के लिए So during the earthquake, yeah. how many things inside this mahal were damaged? How did you restore it? Was it really bad? Yes, this 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 is the Fuara Mahal. This portion is the main portion of the Aina Mahal. Okay. And this was very badly damaged. This portion yes, was badly this damaged. Yes, badly damaged. It was like this, you know, the turn like this. Oh my God. Six inch. And then we opened this terrace, and we removed this debris from the top, and and then after we conquered this one now. Okay. So now we inside is four inch only the terraces. Before it was one and half feet. Pramodji has a wealth of knowledge. He tells me about the royal chhatardis that lie not very far from Aina Mahal. These cenotaphs were also built by Ram Singh Malam in honor of the kings. It's interesting how the architecture of Burj is highly influenced by Europe. Next door to Aina Mahal is the giant Prague Mahal designed in the Italian style. Another fascinating site is the Ramkund step well that lies in the heart of the city. Step wells like these serve as irrigation tanks and are almost synonymous with Gujarat. The Ramkund step well offers a quiet atmosphere and is a great way to cool off in the summer. It definitely seems to be a hit among the amphibians here. I'm on my way to meet Kuldeep. He's been closely associated with the communities here. He knows Kutch like the back of his hand and has offered to show me around. Vasuno Hindustan asa jo pyaro Hindustan. Kuldeep Gadvi has all it takes to be a perfect travel guide. He loves the outdoors, speaks fluent English and shares his heart and soul with the tribes of Kutch. Kuldeep runs a company called Kutch Adventures and enjoys planning tours for those looking to venture off the beaten track. Now when you're exploring a tribal area, it's always advisable to hire a guide who speaks the local dialect and understands regional lifestyles. Besides, there's nothing like company when you're on the road. Coming up on Follow the Star, Kuldeep and I set out on a classic road trip to explore the culture and cuisine of Kutch. I then continue my journey further to the much awaited great run of Kutch. Follow the star. Now that you've taken my lines away, tell me a little more about yourself. Okay, I'm born and brought up in Bhuj. Uh, I've lived all my life here. But my story uh, about Kutch adventures it starts after the earthquake because Kutch was hit by the earthquake in year 2001. And after that, we lived in shelter for a few years. Uh, but that's the that was the time when I started working with different uh, NGOs. Okay. So I worked with World Food Program and some other NGOs in, in the d different villages of Kutch, and that was the time, you know, when I really came to know about all the different communities living here. That was the first time in my life, and that really fascinated me. And that was like thing I thought, wow, I really like to work closer to nature, closer to these people. So what are we doing then today? Where are you taking? Us? Okay, so first I'm taking you to the village called Bujodi. Kuldeep seems to have a great plan in place and I can't wait to drive up to the desert. But first, we're taking a detour to a weaver's village called Bhujori that lies 12 kilometers east of Bhuj. Then, we cross the tropic of Cancer and head north to visit the tribes of Bhirandiyara. I continue my journey further to Kalodungar, the highest point of Kutch before heading to Dhordo, the last village in Gujarat where I visit the great run of Kutch. 
So how many communities in total? Like in well, which? In total, okay, we could have like roughly I could say that 10 to 15 different like known communities, oh, wow. which are still following their tradition, the way they live, the way they dress. They're also known for different type of work they do, like different embroideries, handicrafts. Okay. So what is their main source of income, say? Uh, income comes from farming and from uh, from milk, because most of the people either they are farmers cattle. or cattle herders. As we cross the city limits, I could spot little settlements of tribes, each dressed in a unique fashion. Kuldeep tells me the village of Bhujori is over 500 years old. It is home to the Vankar community of weavers who use traditional methods of spinning to produce textiles. I am here to meet Babu Bhai, one of the last weavers of the mushroom technique. Babu Bhai, Shoni Kaje. Namaste. Namaste. कैसे हो आप आप क्या बना रहे हो? ये अभी मशरूम वेविंग कर रहा हूँ मैं जो जिसका कपड़ा सिला जाता है वो यहाँ का कच्च का ट्रेडिशनल है। ये इसमें से एक कपड़ा बनेगा? जी। तो पूरा टाइम स्पैन क्या है इसका एक कपड़े का? एक मीटर में चार घंटे लगते हैं जैसे कि इसका पूरा टीचिंग करना ये सब अलग अल could you tell me something about uh, this village and its history? Right now, yeah, uh, this village, Bujuri village, is about 400 to 500 years old. Okay. And basically, this village was settled by Rabari. Rabari are shepherd, one of the community of Kutch. So, Rabari, wherever they would go with the cattle, uh, this community, weaver, they would follow them. So, so the, the Rabaris are the weavers? No, the Rabaris are the shepherd. Okay, the shepherds. Yeah, they have okay. cattle and they also do seasonal farming. So they would give to weavers uh, as, a, as a barter, as an exchange. Okay. And people would like weave blankets system. and shawls for them. And that's how this village is settled. Mashru is a specialized style of mixed weaving identified by its multicolored stripes. So, Babu Bhai, this shawl that I have behind me, it looks like it's a cut. Because its design is so famous. I know that it's a cut design. It's a lot of colors. It's a little dull. ये ब्लैक है क्योंकि ब्लैक ज़्यादातर रबारी लोग ब्लैक बहुत यूज़ करते हैं और आहिर लोग हैं बहुत ही वो मल्टी और ब्लैक दोनों यूज़ करते हैं तो ये देखिए मतलब कम्युनिटी में डिफरेंस है ये एक कम्युनिटी ये पहनता है जी हाँ उसकी वो पहचान है हमारे यहाँ कच्छ की अलग-अलग कम्युनिटी की पहचान है the availability of machine-made garments has led to a decrease in traditional hand-woven mushroom textiles. But Babu Bhai's passion for the art has left me inspired and I have decided to pick up a few lessons from his son, a budding weaver. I've been driving all over India covering places on this show but I have to tell you that the best roads that I've driven on so far is in Gujarat like I can't tell you uh, since I started my journey till right now on our way to the run I haven't crossed rough patches or like really bad roads you're right because roads are pretty really good in they are, right? Especially this road where we are driving, which is up north in the desert, in the run of Kutch. Okay. And uh, this road is particularly good because it is used by army, by the border security force. Oh, so that's because, why it's... Yeah, it is. Because, you know, we had a war between India and Pakistan yeah. in 1931. Yeah. So since then, they are maintaining this road because from this road, the army uh, march in, in the desert all the way up to okay. the border. Oh, wow. So that's why this road must be maintained. Driving north into the desert, we cross the Tropic of Cancer, a latitudinal line that touches six states in India. I could notice a stark change in terrain. It seemed more dry and arid. My God, look at this. It's oh, look at this. <laughs> it's like sandstorms. Oh, huh? yes. Every summer, it's common scene every day. In a harsh landscape like this, 
it's hard to imagine there are communities that actually reside here. I am headed to Bhirandiara, a small village tucked away in the desert. The tribal communities in this region are extremely friendly and if you have a local to converse with them, you might even end up enjoying an authentic meal. I think I'm in luck today. Okay, Sonika, we are here at uh, Bhirandiara village. And right now our host is uh, Hasubai Welji Marwada. Namaste. <laughs> and uh, she's going to cook for us and you're going to assist her. Oh, very nice. Since she only speaks Kachi and does not speak Hindi, Kuldeep here is going to help us communicate. So please ask her what she's going to cook <laughs> for us. What did you ask her? Gwar ne batada. Okay, she's going to cook vegetable uh, out of uh, gowar and uh, batada. Potato. Uh, potato, yeah, with okay. garlic. Oh, lovely. I have noticed she is like chopped more than half her bowl and I'm still struggling with this knife. At least I've learned a new recipe. I'm gonna go back home and uh, try and chop the beans and uh, the potato the way she's done it today and I'm actually going to make this kachi vegetable dish. Look at it, oh wow! Kuldeep and I are then invited into one of the tiny decorated huts to enjoy our meal. Thank you. That's one of the best sabzis I've ever tasted. It's just simple roti and beans and aloo but it really tastes amazing. As I relish every bit of lunch, I can't help but be amazed at the small joys in life. Right in the middle of a dusty dry desert is a community that is as colourful, as vibrant and as welcoming to travellers like me. It's time to say my goodbyes to Kuldeep, my amazing guide and Hasubai's wonderful family but not before we capture this moment. I'm now headed towards Kalo Dungar, a place that Kuldeep suggested I visit. It's set to offer beautiful aerial views of the great run of Kutch. I've had a long day, but luckily the drive has been pretty good. It takes a while to get used to driving automatic cars for those who haven't, but it's ideal for long road trips because it's effortless driving. Maneuvering the car on different terrains can be a task and it helps to have a compact car with a front wheel drive. My B180 is quite ideal for highways like these. The steep winding roads seem to have completely guarded my much awaited view of the run. So I continue to drive uphill until I reach its peak. I've made it to the top of Kalodongar or the Black Hill. This is the highest point of Kutch. That's my first view of the great run. It's spectacular and I can't wait to get there. Kalo Dungar makes for a great place to hang out and is definitely a must visit. But I can't wait to get down there and catch a closer view of the great run. So I drive straight to Dhordo, the last village of Gujarat. As I inch closer to my destination, I am surrounded by large expanses of dried mud on either side. The Great Run of Kutch is set to span an area of over 7,000 square kilometers and it's all quite overwhelming. So this is it. It's literally the end of the road. I'm at the last town of Gujarat. 70 kilometers ahead of me lies Pakistan and here is a massive desert separates the two countries. I feel at the edge of the world. Amazing. Amazing. 
Kutch lies away from the hubbub of urban cities with a terrain that's stunning but challenging to live in. And yet, I have seen more smiling faces here than anywhere else. I'm definitely taking some of the Kutchy spirit home with me. Winding roads, a historic toy train, a unique mushroom farm, a very special guest and some scrumptious food are all in store for you next week on Follow the Star. This week, uh, dropping, yeah. Thank you. And here is a massive desert separating both countries. I forgot the last line. What was that? Oh, go on, yeah. I feel at the edge of the world. Serves as a... It's the district capital... Capital? <laughs> huh. Bajao. I love to say that part on all of the stuff.